In my last MCPs video, we saw why classic MCP servers were the wrong abstraction for serious agents. They were eating like 50 to 100k tokens just on two definitions, and the idea that we explored was basically just let your agents run the code. Let your agents generate the code for the tools that they actually need to use and lock only the results that they actually need to see. Anthropic has now taken this exact idea and baked it directly into Claude. They just released what they call advanced tool use. A tool search tool so Claude can discover tools on demand instead of loading everything up front, programmatic tool calling made specifically for this new technique, and tool use examples so it learns to actually use your APIs from real examples, not just JSON schemas. This is amazing for us builders, but if you point it at the real data without the right safeguards, it can actually cause a lot more damage a lot faster. So in this video, I want to do two things. Walk you through this new Anthropic blog post and break down what actually changed in tool use and how it updates the advice from the end of MCP video. Plus a quick look at how I apply the same pattern in my own agent framework, even with other model providers that do not support this directly in their API yet. Let's dive right in. All right, so let's start with what exactly Anthropic shipped here and how it connects to everything we talked about in the MCP video. In that video, I basically said that MCP is great as a standard, but the way everyone is using it right now is kind of broken. You connect a bunch of MCP servers, you load dozens of tools per server, and before the agent even sees the first user request, you've already burned 50 to 100k tokens just on tool definitions alone. Anthropic opens this post with exactly that problem. So the first key sentence that matters for us builders is that agents should discover and load tools on demand, keeping only what's relevant for the current task. This is already a pretty big mindset shift from the original MCP hype. Instead of here's every tool I have, good luck, it's now give the agent a way to search for tools and only materialize the ones that it actually needs right now. And that's the first feature the tool search tool. So let me read you the core idea in plain language. Instead of loading all tool definitions up front, you simply pass in one special tool called the tool search tool that discovers tools on the go. So this means that Claude doesn't see any of the heavy tool definitions at the start. It only sees the search tool itself, which is only around 500 tokens. Whenever it needs a capability, it calls the search tool with a query like GitHub pull requests or search Jira tickets, and the search tool returns a small set of matching tools and only those tool definitions actually enter the context. So if you have like 200 tools and only three are relevant for this task, you don't pay for all 200 upfront. You only pay for three. They even quantify it. Traditional approach, 77K tokens before any work begins. With tool search, 8.7K tokens, preserving 95% of context window. And in their internal evals, they also see accuracy on MCP tasks jump when using tool search tool because Claude is not overwhelmed by a huge list of similar tools that all kind of look the same. To use this new tool search tool, in the tools array, you simply add tool search tool regex and then the date when it was released. And for all your other tools that you provided before, you also need to set defer loading to true. And for MCP servers, they even show how to defer the entire server by default and then override only a few hot tools, like for example, search files to always be loaded, which is honestly a game changer. So this is basically MCP plus a built-in router. Many people talked about this in my last video in the comments. Instead of wiring 10 MCP servers directly to your agent and hoping for the best, you now simply register all of them, mark them as deferred, and let Claude search for what it needs when it needs it. The trade-off is simple. You add a search step, so a bit more latency, but you save a lot of context and get better tool selection. My take here is pretty simple. If you have fewer than 10 tools, you probably don't need this yet. If you have multiple MCPs and add 50 plus tools, tool search is a no brainer. This is the official version of the manual pattern many of us were already hacking together on top of MCP. 
Next, they also talk about the second problem. Even if you fix the tool definition bloat, we still have the same issues we already discussed in the last video. Intermediate tool results polluting the context. So I won't repeat the whole explanation here. Instead, let's focus on what they propose as a solution. Programmatic tool calling. And this is very close to what I showed in the previous video where we talked about code execution with MCP. Instead of making 20 natural language tool calls, let the model write a script that calls your tools in code inside a sandbox. To make this concrete, they walk through a very simple but realistic example. Which team members went over their Q3 travel budget? You also have three tools available. Get team members, get expenses, and get budget by level. The traditional way to do this with tool calling is first the agent makes a tool call to get the team members, then it makes tool calls to get the expenses for each team member, then tool calls to get the budgets, and then another model call where it combines all this in its context window. In programmatic tool calling, Claude instead writes Python like this. This code runs inside the code execution tool and Claude literally calls your other tools or MCP servers inside the Python script. This allows it to process the data inside the script and instead of reading all 2000 intermediate line items, Claude only sees the final printed JSON. So what does this change in practice? They show three concrete improvements from their internal tests. Token savings, average token usage dropped 37% on complex research tasks. Reduced latency, fewer model round trips because one script can handle many tool calls in a single code block. And improved accuracy, explicit loops and conditionals in code are simply more reliable than do this 20 times in natural language. From a builder perspective, this is basically official confirmation that just let your agents run the code is not a hack anymore. It's the recommended approach now. And I'm surprised that Anthropic was the first frontier model company to do this, but I'm sure that the rest of them will follow. The only difference versus what I showed in the previous MCP video is that now there is a first class API contract around this. Before, I had to manually prompt and explain to the model how to do this, how to print two calls and how to work with this new pattern. Now, it seems like Claude is literally trained to follow this, so you're not only not wasting your time and tokens for prompting, but it is also more reliable. So the way this works is you simply add code execution to your tools. Then, instead of calling your tools directly, Claude writes orchestration code like this. Then you simply execute your code and provide Claude with the final result. This final result is the only thing that Claude sees. It is not seeing the 2000 expense line items that it processed along the way. However, of course, do not use it with simple agents. Use it with agents that either process large data sets or run multi-step workflows with many different tool calls that need to be combined together. The third feature is tool use examples. In short, this is a way to attach small realistic examples of tool calls directly into the tool definition. So the model sees not just the JSON schema, but also what a good tool call looks like. And this can greatly improve the performance of your agents, especially on tools with many optional fields and conventions. Although, to be fair, I don't think that this is something completely new or groundbreaking, because even before we could provide examples in parameter descriptions or in a special example field in a JSON schema or in the system prompt. Here, it just becomes a standardized field in the tool definition. So the combined picture is tool search, don't load everything, only the tools that you need, programmatic tool calling, orchestrate tools in code, not in context, and tool use examples, show the model proper calls, not just JSON. This is exactly the direction we've been moving toward manually. The difference is that now Anthropic essentially formalized it and gave us a proper APIs to work with. So now the important part. With these features, it's easier than ever to implement this approach in code because Anthropic finally gave us a proper framework to do this. But without proper safeguards, it can actually backfire. There are five main reasons for that. First, this makes your workflow less deterministic. If with traditional MCPs, you are confident that the agent can execute your workflow repeatedly every single time, with tool search and programmatic tool calling, there are more ways it can make a mistake. For example, a tool might not be found in tool search because the query is phrased differently. Or the agent might simply write incorrect code in the orchestration script. 
Second, it's much harder to debug. You will not be able to see the outputs of tools when using tracing platforms in the same way. You'll mainly see the final result coming out of the code. So if some of the tools are returning wrong data inside that script, you won't see those intermediate tool calls and you might not even know it. Third, it also adds some latency. You're now adding a code execution step and sometimes a search step. For complex multi-step workflows, this is usually worth it. But for very simple single tool tasks, it might actually make things slower compared to the direct MCP tool call. Fourth, it's harder to guarantee safety with this approach. The agent has way more autonomy now. It can write loops, conditionals, and combine multiple tools in ways you didn't explicitly design. The worst case, without proper safeguards, it can even erase your entire tool ecosystem or wipe out all of the data if destructive tools are exposed. And fifth, this is also much harder to implement correctly. You do have to set up custom sandboxes where your agents can execute code and all your provided tools safely and store the results. That's non-trivial infra work if you're not using a platform that already gives you these sandboxes like ours. So this isn't free power. It's more power with more responsibility. In the next part of the video, I'll show you how I'm already applying the same ideas in my own agent framework with other models and MCP servers that don't even support this in the API yet. So you'll see how both Anthropic intends this to work and how we actually use these patterns in our own stack safely. If you've never tried building agents with our framework, make sure to follow our getting started guide on our documentation. The process is honestly extremely simple. All you need to do is just copy our starter template and then prompt cursor because this template already contains all of the necessary rules and files that cursor is going to need in order to build your agents for you. I'm going to be converting this cold email OS agency that is currently running all cold email campaigns for us and for our clients. And this is a perfect use case for this new pattern because instantly MCP contains, I think, 36 tools in total. And the agent often has to perform 10 or 20 different tool calls in order to complete a task, even though it doesn't need to see all the results. So let me show you an example. Let me ask it to find all inboxes with incorrect settings. As you can see, the agent has to perform over 20 different tool calls just to find the accounts that do not have the correct configuration, even though it could simply iterate through all these accounts in a loop without actually checking the info for each account and then only log the accounts that do not have the correct configuration. And then at the end, it provides me with the summary for all the campaign settings for each account. And if we look at the traces, you can see that the final number of tokens consumed is almost 40,000, which is insane. Okay, so now let's jump into the repo and let me show you how to fix this. So we've added a new command called MCP code execution, and this command essentially describes to cursor how to use this new pattern. Additionally, we've recently added new methods directly into our framework specifically for this new pattern. So now it's even easier for us to do this than ever before, and it's using a very unique approach, which I'll explain to you while cursor is doing this. So simply tag this command MCP code execution and tell cursor to convert the campaign manager agent to this new pattern. I recommend selecting at least Claude 4.5 Sonnet for this. Okay, so first what cursor did is it converted this instantly MCP server into individual tools using this new method that I mentioned earlier. And then it created this generate schema file function similar to what Anthropic showed in their cookbook. So this generate schema file function now saves the schema inside the campaign manager files directory. So you can see this instantly mcp.txt file with all the tool definitions inside the agent folder. The reason it saves it into the files directory is because this folder is used as the knowledge for the agent. Essentially, all files that you add into this framework will be automatically converted into embeddings and added to your agent's knowledge. Then cursor proceeds to testing at least one tool from each MCP server. And then at the end, it also adds two tools to actually execute code to this agent from our framework and adjusts the agent's instructions to use this new pattern. So as you can see, it literally does everything for you step by step. And finally, it tells me that the conversion is complete. Now let's deploy our changes. And by the way, this agency is right now deployed on our own platform called Agency AI. And let's wait until the build is finished. Okay, now that our agency is deployed, let's test it again and then compare the traces. 
So now, as you can see, the agent first searches the files because, again, we uploaded all the tool definitions as knowledge to this agent. And then the agent no longer uses the MCP server and instead runs the functions directly in code using this IPython interpreter tool. Then it performed another tool call to actually filter out the inboxes that do not have the correct settings. And then it already provides me with the summary. And the final token consumption was much lower, only 14,000 tokens this time. So I've been playing with this for the last two, three weeks, and basically all the recent agents that I built are using this MCP code execution approach. The reason is because agents have become just way too good at writing the code, so it makes no sense for us to build the tools for our agents ourselves, because they can literally do it better than we can. And so I will be experimenting with this more and more, and I do hope that more providers like Anthropic will release this directly in their APIs, because this makes it even easier for us builders. The primary challenges with this pattern today is that number one, it requires a lot of prompting to explain this to an agent, and number two, it requires some infrastructure overhead, because executing code can sometimes introduce some security risks. So you need to set up secure sandboxes where agents can safely run the code. So if you want to do that, check out our platform, Agency AI. And we even provide storage to your agents, which means that your agents can also even evolve their own skills. They can save certain files in persistent storage and then reuse them across different chats. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.